Hey guys, what I'd like to do in this video is show you this tripod that's currently in its box. It's from the brand K and Death Concept. Now, as far as the size goes, the Amazon UK listing says 72 inches, but the Amazon USA listing says 66 inches. I'm not sure which one is correct, but they both look like they're the same items. In the UK, it's retailing about £100, and in the USA, it's about $150 just now. Prices do always change. Now, I do have a lot of tripods. You can see this big beast in the background here. That's probably my biggest one. It's probably my most expensive one as well. I do have a lot of other ones around the place. Um, and, you know, they're all good in one way or another. And you will find that, that you know, there's not like a perfect tripod. You'll need a, a, a collection of smaller tripods for certain shots. You'll need the larger tripods for certain shots. And yeah, sometimes you need to go out and you need to buy um, a different tripod to get a different shot. One of the, the better selling things about this one is the fact that it has a horizontal column. And that will hopefully allow me to get overhead shots a little bit easier. Now, at the moment, I've actually got another tripod over here. At the moment, I've got my RX-10 hooked up to my PC here using this tripod, and this one goes down below. But there's another way to do it, and, you know, I've talked about this a lot in the past. And, um, yeah, one of the ways that you can do it is, in instead of doing, like, uh, upside down, putting the camera upside down, which can be a little bit of a pain because of you know, the HDMI cable coming out. Another way to do it is to do like a horizontal column. Now, as you can see inside the box, you get the tripod and this case is actually pretty fantastic. Look at the size of those zips. It's got hooks in the back as well. This is very, very high quality, which, you know, is to be expected. You know, this is a, this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a 100 pounds tripod. It's not a cheap tripod. I'm not saying that it is. And when you spend a little bit more money, you should get more for your money. So inside, you get a strap for this carry case. This, I'm really liking this carry case. Um, also, you get silica gel. You always get silica gel. Well, there's lots of silica gel falling about the place. Um, you've got another, it looks like a, like a central column with some um, screws there. Maybe that's to adjust some things, maybe to change from one... Um, type of connection to another. Who's the best way to open this? Okay. So this looks at this looks really good actually when I look at it. Um, so we've got a manual here, different languages. It's got an Allen key in there as well. Um, first impressions are that this looks very very good. And of course, you know, your opinion of tripods does change over time. Sometimes you have to spend a few months to try and understand the limitations of a tripod. This seems to be all in Chinese that side, but thankfully it's all in English that side. But if you're French, Italian, Spanish or anything like that, yeah. You're out of luck, you're going to have to rely on the diagrams. But th there is an explanation there. I think most people will be able to follow what's going on there. So. Here is the tripod. And, um, wow, this thing is quite weighty. So, I've got one like this already. The, um, which one is it? It's like this. This one down here is quite similar. This one. This one is quite similar. Um, and so and so much is the way that it locks and all that. But this one is lighter. This one is a cheaper version. This one seems heavier. But the, the way that I'm saying, um, if I can bring this up, uh, the reason I'm saying this is similar is because this one works in the same way with the legs. You can spin the legs around like this. So the center column works in that, in that way. You can spin it around and then it's got these locks here. So see these locks? So you can lock these so that the legs don't go any further. So that's locked, the leg won't go any further. But when I unlock it, I can go all the way up. And the idea with that is that you don't actually have to move this center column. You don't have to remove it because you just spin the legs around. So rather than, uh, I've got another tripod where you have to take off the center column, spin it around, and then put the center column back on. And this one, you move the legs, it's a lot quicker. So it's got this like kind of velvet pouch protecting the top here. And look at the size of this. This is actually quite big. Um, if I move this center column down, there we go. Now, 
Uh, as far as bald heads go, this is actually one of the kind of biggest and nicest bald heads I've seen. Wow, this is fantastic. So, yeah, it's got a detachable monopod as well. Um, yeah, this looks really good. This looks very, very good. So what I'd like to do at this point is get over the old tripod and overhead camera and give you a closer look at this tripod from a, a, an overhead camera point of view, just so that you can see it. I, I realise from this point of view, it's a little hard to see what all the positions, uh, all the different positions, what am I talking about? All the different parts of the tripod, it is quite hard to see it from this angle. So I'm going to get over the, uh, bring over the overhead camera and we'll take a closer look at this £100, $150 tripod. So now we have the overhead camera set up and I do want to show you this, but before I do, I just want to show you some of the other things that were included in the box. The, the first one being this tripod use manual, not user manual. Um, this side is in Chinese, this side is in English. No French, Italian, Portuguese or Spanish or anything like that, but I think just by looking at the diagram, you can get an idea of how this works. This is self-explanatory for anyone who's ever used a tripod before because, you know, most of the mechanisms here is similar in most of our tripods. So if you've got tripods already, you will be familiar with how a lot of this works. But it's pretty good that they do include this. They do have an Allen key as well, which will allow you to tighten, get in there, parts like that. Um, so yes, get in, there you go. So that fits there. So it allows you to tighten up certain parts of the tripod. Um, this looks like an extension. I can't see anything in the in the diagram here that shows you whether this is for the central column. I think it might be for the monopod because one part, one leg here is actually detachable. You can you can see there where it says release and lock. You can actually just remove this part. Um, if I turn it the right way, you can take it off like that, and it becomes a monopod. And this part will then just connect to the ball head. So that's a pretty cool feature, and I believe that's what this is for to extend it. Uh, the the large ball head here came packaged. It was almost like it was like a golf club. You know the way that golfers protect their the golf clubs like that. It came with this velvet bag. Nice little touch, but when you spend a lot of money, they really should be throwing things like that in. Uh, and here is the case that um, perhaps you didn't see what it was like from my other camera. But you can see here, this is a high quality case, no doubt about it. It's got some hooks in the, uh, in the bottom as well, which is quite useful. You want to hook this to other equipment that you've got. And it does come with a shoulder strap there as well. So quality wise, this is a very good case. I mean, just look at the, the thickness of those zips. So absolutely no complaints about the way that this is all packaged from the case. The manual's good enough, but yeah, the pouch and all that, it's all very, very good. Okay, enough, enough looking, enough talk about the, um, about the accessories. Let's look at the tripod itself. And uh, sometimes I think it is important to get the overhead camera over to take a closer look at these things because it's sometimes hard to show a tripod because it is so large. You can see the, the ball head at the top here, the tripod ball head, and, and this is very similar to other ball heads on the market. I would say though, this one does look a little bit better than the standard one. I've got, you know, like three or four different versions of this one, and it works in the same way. You can see the quick release plate at the top there, and you can see that this will spin round all the way around there, but then can come down to this part as well. And you can see the spirit level there, now the quick release plate is very, very useful. You put this to the bottom of your camera, you screw your camera on there, and then you don't have to, you know, twist it around. You keep the, the, the base plate on and then you can slide it. And this works really, really well. Now, of course, this can be taken off. And this will use a 3 eighths, I believe it is. 3 eighths. Uh, and that's good because sometimes you will want to use a different ball head. There's a lot of ball heads out there that are different, you know, that are designed for something different. For example, this is quite a very good, um, this is a good general tripod ball head. But you could, for example, use a video head with handles if you're, if you're doing video work. So you can uh, change that. You can put on, you know, sliders, dolly sliders and all that kind of thing as well. Now, let's look at this part. This is the, this is the part which really separates this tripod from many others. So, see if I can do this on camera. If I loosen this up, you'll see that this column goes up like that. But then, look at that. So, vertical, 
horizontal and then I tighten it up. So when I was saying at the beginning about using this as an overhead camera and it is hard to try and get this in the shot but that's effectively how this would work. This goes to a right angle and once you've got it like that, if you prefer, you can then slide this further in. So it doesn't have to be tight, you can slide it along more like that. Very, very cool, but I mean, it seems quite secure, even there, it seems very, very secure. It's quite tight when you get it all set up. So that is at a right angle. Now, when I finish with the overhead camera section, I will try and set it up like that, and I wanna show you how it works. It would be good to show you how this could work like that. But what I want to do at this point, if I can bring this back up, slides back down. I really like how that works, really nice. Now, this part is uh, the legs, and it's very similar to this one. This one is annoying because one of the legs is actually broke. This part never slides in, this locking mechanism is broke. Um, but this looks really, really good. Um, this is just a sticker, you can take this off. Um, and you can see what I was showing there on the camera before. You see how that is stopping? What you have to do is lift this up and then you can put it to different points. So that will stop there and then you lift that up. And if you want, at that point, you can then go all the way around. So go all the way around, which I can't show you because of the camera getting in the way, but I showed you that before. These legs will go all the way to the other side and then all of a sudden this tripod ball head is not at the top of the tripod, it's actually at the bottom. So you move the legs, you don't move the central column. Um, you can put weights at the bottom here if you need to, you know, increase stability. Uh, and as I was saying before, you can detach this as a monopod. Uh, you know, this is a first impressions video, without doubt, this is first impressions. And, and my opinion does sometimes change after using something for three or four months or a year, etc. But my first impressions having, you know, four or five other big tripods like this in my collection are quite positive. It's very similar to this one here, except everything is better. The bow head is better. It's got this versatile central column. It's got the detachable monopod, which this one does have as well. So that's a lie that with the fact I'm even pointing that out. I forgot this one does have that. But everything just seems a little bit better made. Um, it's, it's like a super version of this, if you want to call it that. Um, so yeah, it, it seems pretty good, and um, this is quite versatile. It says here, if you look at the the, the the stats on Amazon, it says the minimum height is 14.76 inches, which is 375 millimeters, or 37.5 mm, uh, centimeters. The max height is 72 inches, so the max height for this is 72 inches, or 183.5 centimeters. The load capacity is 10 kilograms, 22 pounds, so... Yeah, this is a versatile tripod. It can be used to hold very heavy cameras if that's what you want to do. And yeah, it's a hundred pounds, but I'm never too bothered about spending that kind of money on tripods like this because they all last when, you know, when it's a quality tripod, it will last. Stay away from those cheap plastic ones. They do have their place. If you, you know, if you, if you just have a, a basic requirement for a tripod, the, the plastic ones, will do the job if it's 10 or 20 pounds, but don't expect them to last for a long time. They're they're very prone to breaking. The plastic is, is very brittle, but if you want something to last, sometimes it is better to go for something quality because you buy cheap, you buy twice. But what I'd like to do at this point is just jump over to the other camera and just show you how this central column works for, uh, how it works, but because for me, this is one of the best selling points of this tripod. So I hope you guys can still see me here. That is a little bit of a mess on the table here. But what I wanted to show you was this tripod here. This is the overhead tripod that I was using before. It's not really an overhead tripod. It's just a standard tripod where I put the, the ball head at the bottom so that I can attach my Sony RX10. And this has worked out quite well in the past. Previously, for many years, I was using this Mic Boom Arm. I've actually got two of these. And it allowed me to swing the camera into position. The problem was that it was always shaky. So it would get to the position that I wanted to, but then the camera would move around because anytime I put my hand on the table, it would shake, which is why I moved to this very simple tripod. And this has worked well, but it is by no means perfect because when the camera is attached here, the micro HDMI cable always has to get squashed in and there's always a risk of the cable being bent. 
that's an issue. But a bigger issue really is that the tripod legs get in the way. And I, I, I frequently find that the best position for the camera is when the tripod leg is facing me. So I've got, you know, two legs at the far, uh, far end at the behind. And at the front, I've got the single tripod leg. But what that means is I need to kind of move my hands around to try and get to the product that I'm reviewing. For example, my phone. If you are looking for a cheap overhead camera solution, I do think this is probably the best option. Just a very simple um, tripod, one that allows you to put the, the ball head at the bottom. But this, this tripod from KNF Concept is, in my opinion, a lot better. So I'm going to start showing the camera here because this is actually recording right now. And you can see it moving around. Now, the cool thing is that this central column will move around, but obviously you need to be careful of doing that because if you put it to a certain angle, it will lose um, it will lose balance. You want to keep it stable. And you can do that very easily. You know, it's just as simple as moving one of the back legs, um, you know, a little bit further back to stabilize it. You do have that hook at the bottom if you want to put, you know, something uh, there as well. But if you look over here, you can maybe get a better idea of how this is going to work for my product reviews. Now, right now you can see my table, you can see everything, you know, the legs and everything, but all you have to do is get your camera and zoom in a little bit and position everything so that that is not being shown. And now all of, all of a sudden you have an overhead camera. Now, the key thing about this is that, um, well, the way that I've got it set up is maybe a bad example of this. But um, the key the key point and the key principle of this is that the tripod legs are not getting in the way because I'm using this central column to hang my overhead camera. I'm not in the way. You know, the tripod legs are not in the way like they were before. For me, that is incredibly, incredibly useful. I really can't stress that enough because I do do a lot of overhead camera shots with my product reviews. Um, now this, the way that I'm recording right now, you can see that I'm picking up a lot of different things, but I, I'm facing this camera. I'm, you know, trying to look at the shot as well. This isn't the ideal setup right now that I've got, but I will get there. You know, I will be able to set this up uh, in, the, in the perfect location for me where the, the tripod legs are not being displayed, where nothing is in the way. And the way that it is just now, you know, I can, you know, I just have to zoom into the right position and position the camera so that the focus is on the product down here and there is nothing in my way now. And it sounds like, you know, it sounds like such a silly thing, but really that's what you want with an overhead camera. You want to have a big open space where you can put your hands. You don't want to put in your, you know, your hands and your arms around tripod legs. And really that's what one of the biggest selling points of this tripod uh, are to me. You know, one of the biggest selling points is that it's got this versatile central column. So if you just need a basic tripod, there are a lot of, you know, alternatives out there. This one, oh, <laughs> I really, I nearly did drop that there because I spun that camera around out the way. Um, so you need to extend those legs. So a reminder to do that. There we go. Um, this KNF concept tripod is very similar to the one that I had before. This one natural, the twist lock um, stopped working. And I really became annoyed with twist locks because of that. But the, the legs here, the twist locks seem quite good. They don't seem, you know, they seem a little bit better made than this one. Uh, generally speaking, the KNF concept is like a better version of this. And one of the, 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 this, the best selling points of a tripod like this is that you can quickly change the position of the tripod ball head simply by switching the legs around the other side. If I do this back to front, there we go. Uh, and now look, overhead camera. So that setup, you know, it's the same setup that the KNF Concept tripod uses here. It's very, very simple to do that. So I could just use this in the same way that I used an overhead uh, camera before, you know, just turn it around, move the legs around so that the ball head is at the bottom. But this does have that central column and that central column is going to be so versatile. I mean, I, I can do it like horizontally. You can you can put this at an angle as well. It doesn't have to be 90 degrees or 180 degrees. It doesn't have to be horizontal or vertical. You can put this, um, you can put this at like 45 degrees or something if you want. That is an option. Um, it's maybe a little bit less secure though there because of the weight seems to bring it down a little bit. So yeah, with something lighter, you probably can secure this at, a, you know, like a 45 degree angle there. But um, I think it does look, work better as a, a horizontal column because it seems to lock into place better when it's when it's a, a central column like that. Um, 
that is going to be very, very, very useful for me. Not just for overhead shots, but there's going to be a lot of different shots where, you know, this is going to put the camera in a position that I can't get with any of the other tripods that I've got. The, the fact that this has got a removable monopod is very useful as well. I probably won't be using that. I could probably use one of my other ones. But generally speaking, I would say that for the price, yes, this is £100 or $150, but for the price, I think this is good good value for money because it does seem well made. And, and I have cheaped out in the past and bought really cheap tripods and they've broken or they just didn't live up to expectations. Uh, this seems quite good. The central columns, are all the legs, everything seems quite well made. The ball head is quite good. The packaging with the case and all that is quite good as well. You know, the whole presentation is pretty good. And you've got the Allen key there for tightening things. And I believe this allows me to extend a part of it as well. I think, I, I'm not sure if that's the central column or the horizontal column. I'll need to play around with it more. But yeah, overall, I'm very, very pleased with this. And, you know, I, I keep saying an overhead camera and I, I keep stressing that feature, but I do think that that is one of the best selling points of this tripod. If you don't need that horizontal column, you know that you're never going to use it, then you probably should go for something a little bit cheaper. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think... As good as a feature this is, I don't think it's worth paying extra money for if you will never use it. But this is something I am going to be using a lot. So for me, this is a fantastic feature and it's one of the best uh, features of this tripod. So yeah, very well made tripod. I'm going to get use out of it. If you're looking for an overhead camera setup, look at that. This is very, very useful. It can zoom in very easily. This is how you get the professional shots, guys, with accessories like this. So I, I do appreciate everyone who's watching the video. If you've got any questions about this, please do post a comment down below. I'll leave a link to the sales page if you want to check it out. There's a lot of uh, tripods out there. So, you know, do your homework, do some research and see which one suits you. But if you're looking for a tripod that does have this horizontal column, this central column that can move to the side and, uh, you know, allow your camera to be placed in a lot of different positions, then this is certainly one that you should check out. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all. Very soon. Take care.